Hey folks, welcome to another edition of Fitness Friday Positives with Rochelle. Last time I concluded a mini series within this leadership series on gym leader or actually fitness facility leadership no-nos. And I actually want to kick off this episode before I delve into the value of a SWOT analysis and the value of defensive pressure in the spirit here of March Madness. I um, want to highlight this article that certainly ties into something that I highlighted last time. It's just this whole issue around cancellation policies and just how people get upset and, and they could just do some crazy things certainly is evidence in this particular article. Now, Courtney Cameron in March 2019 posted this to the athletic business um, online. So it's the title of the article is Disgruntled Ex-Member Drives Through Gym Entrance. And it states, La Mirada California police are investigating an incident that took place at a local 24-hour gym at 2 a.m. Tuesday after a car drove through the front window and into the building. The Honda sedan that plowed through the front entrance of Crunch Fitness and took out the welcome counter was stolen, and there are suggestions the crash may have been intentional. The driver, identified as 32-year-old former gym member Sergio Reyes of Whittier, was ejected from the gym after three weeks due to alleged stalking and harassment of female members. Employees told authorities that Reyes was upset over his gym membership cancellation while he waited to receive a $70 reimbursement. The guy just started revving his car, and at the end, he put it on drive and he let the car go. He was going pretty fast, witness Adrian Nolesco told Eyewitness News. Reyes was seen exiting the vehicle and running towards Imperial Highway. He was found by police in his own vehicle two miles from the scene and taken into custody. Though the gym was open at the time of the crash, no injuries have been reported. Reyes has been arrested for attempted murder and is being held on $1 million bail. And actually, the article has a video attached to it, because clearly the, the, the cameras from inside the gym. And this gentleman who was at the front desk, this employee, just got away in the nick of time. Fortunately, he was focusing. His gaze was towards the front entrance, and so he saw the car coming towards the front entrance and, and, you know, made a beeline in a different direction and got away. If he hadn't have just say, if he'd been, you know, doing something on the computer or distracted, that young man would have been killed. I mean, certainly no doubt in my mind. And that's why he's facing the, the attempted murder charge. But just a very sad and unfortunate example of what happens, you know, just how people can just, you know, overreact and just do some bizarre things regarding cancellation policies and just issues within gyms um, in general. So that's certainly something that is, that is not pretty and is certainly not warranted um, in any case, um, certainly within the fitness industry. And want to highlight a couple of things here um, as, as opportunities. So we talk about the SWOT analysis, the value of a SWOT analysis. And I've gone over this concept a lot of times, but I want to do a very, very, very modified, abbreviated example of a SWOT analysis here for the Novi Michigan fitness market. I know many of you all over are saying, man, I know I've learned so much about the, the Metro Detroit fitness market, and that's certainly the case. But a lot of these lessons, most of these lessons, all of these lessons are universal and can be applied regardless of where you are because it's so important. So we know the SWOT analysis. The, the acronym stands for strengths and weaknesses. And remember, again, folks, these are internal. So that's something that you're evaluating based on your own facility, your chain of facilities. There's various ways that you can gauge this. I mean, you can just engage in a formal market research process to see what your, what your identified strengths and weaknesses are. You can look at surveys. I mean, you can conduct surveys. You know, you can talk to people as they come into your club. You can email them surveys such as SurveyMonkey, which is free. There's various ways you can look at your online reviews and Facebook and Google Plus, Yelp. You can look at those to determine strengths and weaknesses, uh, but also look for patterns. If, some of, if people are saying the same thing over and over again, that is definitely indicative of, of a problem or a weakness um, that needs to be addressed. And so take a look at those, your strengths and weaknesses. I'm not going to go into all of that because there's just so many different fitness entities here in, in the Novi Michigan market. But for purposes of this episode, I want to highlight the importance of, particularly I'm going to focus mostly on the threats aspect of this acronym. So we have opportunities and threats, which are external looking at your market, looking at market conditions, looking at market opportunities, as well as threats that exist within the market. I'm going to focus most specifically in this particular episode on threats and how important threats are um, to the survival of your business and certainly thriving of your, your fitness facility, whatever uh, the case may be. And so in specific, specifically regarding opportunities here, I'm not going to highlight opportunities that exist here in the, in the fitness market because folks, to be quite honest with you, that is consulting. <laughs> And I don't do that. I don't do that. You know, I don't engage in those type of activities for free. You know, I, I value my, my intellect and my and all of that certainly is, is valuable. Uh, and, and I'm not doing that for free, to be to be honest with you. And so I'm going to focus on just some, some some general threats that exist, you know, globally as well as, you know, 
within certain markets as well as opportunities um, that exist within the fitness industry. So just to give you a couple of examples here, the Shreveport Times, the, the newspaper in Shreveport, you heard me talk about Shreveport, Mosier, Louisiana uh, quite a bit, my home area. So I'm going to highlight the headline here just really quickly. March 20th, 2019, title of an article was Shreveport, Bossier City Rank is Second Fattest in the Nation. So you've heard me talk about specifically how within the, the span of launching in the fall of 2017, 2014, pardon me, and then 2017, I, I clearly saw that, that, that Planet Fitness had owned that fitness market, had essentially taken it over uh, from Anytime Fitness, which, which has 11 locations in that particular area, or certainly did about six, six months ago when I did the last count. So that is, an, that is an area where you can see where there's market opportunity, and, and Planet Fitness is certainly leveraged that and taking advantage of that and certainly owns the market now. Uh, but that is the, those are the types of things. When you're reading your, lo your local newspaper, when you're reading local business publications, you can see, even on a regional level or certainly at the local level, what opportunities exist that you can leverage. So if I'm any fitness entity within the, in the Shreveport, Bossier City, Louisiana market, I know that there, there's certainly market potential that exists um, that certainly needs to be leveraged. Um, also, CNN.com on March 19th of this year, they had an article with the headline, only reading the headline in the interest of time, one in five Chinese children is, is overweight or obese, and the booming economy may be to blame. So the first thing I thought of when I saw that was Anytime Fitness, because they are very well poised globally, and they've got a very strong global strategy that they're executing, and as you'll hear me recall as I've studied that franchise, very successful franchise, studied that franchise 2015 through 2017, uh, but for 2015 and 2016, they were ranked number one global global uh, fitness entity, um, for actually within all industries, but, but within the, the fitness category, it was, the, it was just awesome to see a fitness brand, a, a fitness chain have the number one spot, but, but the number one slot, the number one global brand was across all industries, all brands, and it was just awesome to see a fitness uh, a fitness entity take that number one spot, which was very remarkable, but it shows, and their, and their global growth trajectory took off. Um, since then and they're doing extremely well, but that was the first that was my first thought when I saw that anytime fitness is about to blow up in, in, in China and that the market opportunity certainly exists there and for them and for that um, Also, just another quick opportunity here That I want to highlight actually sent an article to myself and that is Athletic business had an article here. Let me load it up here really quickly and Andy Berg in March of 2019 posted this. The title of this article is Fitness Club Owner Expands Via App. And this is, again, leveraging an opportunity, the opportunity that exists in the marketplace in general, regardless of industry, fitness or not, technology. Technology, those entities that are leveraging technology are really, really giving themselves a tremendous competitive, a competitive advantage, as this article points out. And it states, a fitness club owner in Fresno, California, is leveraging a mobile app to help him keep up with demand for his services. Wayne Harlan told the ABC affiliate in Fresno that he has continually had the problem of being unable to serve all of his clients. That all changed this week as Harlan rolled out his new app. This helps me train maybe thousands of people instead of dozens, Harlan said of the app, which works in tandem with a rowing machine. It connects via Bluetooth and tracks progress and fitness levels while giving feedback. The app is based on the program, The Cardio Code. It is the most detailed and cardiovascular program. It is the most detailed cardiovascular program ever written into an app, and it allows each user to set baseline tests, and then it takes those metrics and writes them a personalized training program, he said. Harlan employed the services of local software development, Shift3, to help bring his vision into reality. After more than a year of testing, the app is ready to go live. Wayne and his team can go, and they can do a rowing conference in Florida, and their leave behind is that if they enjoy what they had to say, then they can train with them, said J.P. Pendergrass, Shift3 Senior Business Development Manager. Wayne can come on back to the Central Valley, and people in Florida can work with him remotely through the app. So <laughs> this, as this, as this owner said, went from, went from servicing hundreds to now thousands of individuals, but leveraging the power of, of technology that is a tremendous opportunity that this particular owner took advantage of. And you see his, his, his business, the growth has, has expanded certainly exponentially. And that is just always fantastic to see. But so when we speak about opportunities that exist in your market, like I said, if you've got a marketing person on staff, if you're, if you're contracted a marketing firm, whatever the case may be, these are things that need to be, these are just strategies in terms of identifying opportunities and developing strategies to leverage those opportunities. There may be threats in the market. There are always threats in the market, whether you realize it or not. 
And so with marketing person, marketing firm needs to be helping you strategize, develop strategies around ways to neutralize or eliminate threats that exist within the market. And so this, this whole concept of a SWOT analysis, and this is why I keep coming back to it over and over and over again, that this is a fundamental component of a, a business, certainly a business plan, the competitive analysis aspect of a business plan, regardless of industry, you know, what is so important. And I keep coming back to this because it's so important. That's why you have just all over the nation, even if it's globally, you have gyms and fitness facilities shutting down day in and day out because they didn't see the competition coming. There was no plan. They're, they're now in defensive mode and reaction mode, and it's too late. And so I don't ever want you to be in a position where you're too late and it's too late to react or do anything about a market interest that is a market entrant that is coming to your market and essentially blowing things up and, and taking things over. And so I want to move on here to, to the, the, the importance of the threats aspect specifically within the SWAN analysis, because this is what truly kills, I mean, in addition to obviously the weaknesses that exist internally within a specific facility, but this threat is what gets facilities I don't care whether we're talking about YMCA's, commercial facilities, private entities, this, this concept of not being able to identify threats or just not, you know, not even paying enough attention to threats or devaluing the role of threats that exist in the market. It takes down facilities day in and day out, like I said, and I never want that to be you. And so, folks, Fast Company, you know I'm always reading, but Fast Company had a, a very, you know, this, this article here, the most recent episode, they had an awesome series of, of, of actually several good articles within this one in particular, very inspiring as always. But they highlighted the world's 50 most innovative companies. And so for the fitness industry, you know, in the interest of time, obviously, I smiled when I saw this. You've heard me talk about it. Likely, if you've been watching TV, you've been reading, you've seen Peloton, Peloton, like the Peloton ads. And so for the fitness industry, Peloton was ranked number one. And so I'm going to quickly read here. Seven years after launching as a stationary bike company that allows subscribers to live stream digital cycling classes, Peloton has morphed into a $700 million a year in revenue fitness powerhouse that produces hundreds of hours of videos for a community that includes runners, yogis, and more. We are a content creation shop at this point, says co-founder and CEO John Foley. In 2018, Peloton debuted its tread machine along with a second studio in New York City, where it now films boot camp, yoga, running, and even guided meditation classes led by instructors whom fans have turned into stars. Last year, the company also introduced a $19.49 a month digital prescription, no hardware purchase necessary, that includes access to more than 20 live classes daily, with an additional 10,000 available on demand. The key, according to Foley, is that they're real classes. You're part of the experience. They're so interactive that a user logging into a yoga class from her home in L.A. may get a shout out from the instructor in New York. A London studio is now in the works and a 35,000 square foot mega studio in Manhattan will open in late 2019. So threat. OK, I don't care what type of facility you are. The Peloton bike is a threat to your facility because they've got national ads. They're, they're just obviously getting a lot of progress, publicity and press and are doing extremely well. And so, you know, for a lot of people that don't want to get out and just struggle with motivation, the opportunity to stay home and work out, but also be, also be part of a group fitness experience, you know, and have an instructor acknowledge them. They may be well across their way across the country, and an instructor is giving them a shout out, making them feel like they belong, making them feel included. But that also ties into this whole concept of I don't care what fitness trends you look at the last fitness trend, the top fitness trends for the last several years, group fitness is always up there in the top five. And so that, that leverages both of them. And also want to quickly highlight for the wellness category in, the, in, the, in these top 50 companies, you know, Peloton, obviously, as I mentioned, is number one. But also wanted to highlight number five was Orange Theory Fitness, another franchise that I studied in 2016 and 2017. Um, and they are just making stuff happen. That, that fitness is that, that, that particular, they founded in 2010 and already reached their billion dollar uh, revenue in 2018, so just doing extremely well, doing on a serious tear and doing it, doing just a lot of damage in the market and just doing, just, just making things happen. And that's just so wonderful to see. But that's an example, whether you're reading a magazine, what's happening in the fitness industry? What, how does this apply to my market? Or certainly questions that you need to be asking yourself. And that way you're not caught off guard by things that are happening. You know, when you sit here and say, it, okay, particularly if you're a higher end, thinking from a competitive situation, you know, if I'm, if I'm Equinox, if I'm Lifetime Fitness, 
I'm some of the boutique type of fitness chains. Okay, and the Peloton bike, because obviously it's, it's expensive. This is, you know, obviously they got the 1949 subscription, uh, which is certainly doable for a lot of people, but you know, when you purchase the equipment, that's going to be quite an investment. But folks that are, you know, upper middle to certainly higher than that, those, those economic classes, that is a tremendous threat to those particular facilities that require membership on behalf of individuals that now may be drawn more to the Peloton bike. But that's an example. But folks, so looking at that on a broader level, I want to drill down here to the Novi market. And when you think about the SWOT analysis and the threats, and I know as many of you watching here um, I love Mar March Madness. You're really into March Madness and you just you get so excited and all of that. And I'll be quite honest with you, I'm actually not a big fan of March Madness. Yeah, I watch some of the games, but it's just not something that I get into. I'm more of an NBA fan. You know, I like to I like to see those I like to see those guys play and make things happen on the court. But but the beautiful thing, and I then I just want to highlight a quick story here, and I've shared it one time before. I want to share it again. Years ago, and you know, my dad was you know asking me, you know, Dad, we're on a basketball court. Dad, I want you to teach me some of the basics of basketball and just really help me, whatever this and that. And so I so remember, you know, here I am, you know, shooting, and I thought to myself, we weren't out there. Me and I had to be folks like 15 or 20 minutes. And I said, you know what? We don't even need to stay out here that long because this is easy. This is just so easy. It was great. And one thing my dad says, of course, you know, I'm five feet seven. My dad is six feet two. And then he said, it's easy because there's no one guarding you. There's no one guarding you. And I look back now, and for those of you, again, the March Madness fans or NBA fans or even high school basketball fans, perhaps you have kids that play um, in, in high school, when you think about the concept of, of guarding someone and bringing that defensive pressure, you think about teams that do well, things that teams that succeed, things that you know, teams that make it to the Final Four, just the importance of defensive pressure. And so in, in the whole, and to tie that in to the realm of the SWOT analysis and the threats that exist in your market and markets all over the country, the importance of defensive pressure is, is something that cannot be overstated because that truly makes things. Think about it. You watch a basketball game and there's no defense. I mean, you know, with all due respect, like the all-star game and, you know, you, you know, the Pro Bowl, the NFL, you watch that and you could tell because there's just no defense, rightfully so, because these folks are concerned about getting injured and jeopardizing their careers and contracts and all of that. But there's nothing more boring in my, in my perspective than just watching these games and there's no defense being played. All right. And I would argue just to draw that parallel to the fitness industry on a market local level, your market, you know, when, it, when, a, when a franchise, when a private gym, whatever the case may be, a YMCA, it's just coasting and there's no threats, there's no defensive pressure, you know, yeah, that may be great if you're the person in that situation, but that's why it's just absolutely beautiful when a very strong entrant comes in into the market and really brings defensive pressure, places defensive pressure on that particular facility or chain of facilities, whatever the case may be, you know. And when I think about our Metro Detroit market here, as I, as I quickly move on into the Novi market specifically here with some threats, when I think about Crunch Fitness, and, and how, you know, March 2017 and, you know, continue. And I started studying them then, this particular franchise, as it entered our market. But then, you know, went on to the, the Westland, Michigan fit, fitness facility there that they have. And that was in the fall of 2017. And I, you know, I followed up because, you know, the owner, you see Adam's cards and actually all of his clubs. But I, I, I took one of those cards and I reached out and said, you know what, you know, your, your folks are doing a great job, as I always do. You know, folks, I'm pro-fitness. I'm not favoring one chain or the other. When I first started studying that franchise, I was actually a powerhouse. And when I actually toured the first time in the fall of 2017, I was actually a member of Planet Fitness in Novi. But I give shout, shout outs to all. I don't favor anyone over the other. Send them an email. Hey, your folks are doing a great job. And most importantly, thank you for bringing choice to citizens and residents of Metro Detroit. You know, it was wonderful to, 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 to be, to, to be a, new, a, a new entrant in this market, but also pressure i knew when i sent that email when when i when i but actually the, when i first started studying this this entity the pre-sale that was in, that was happening in early 2017 uh, for that westland michigan facility i knew i said you know what this particular chain is going to bring a lot of defensive pressure place a lot of defensive pressure on our market i knew it looking at the price point look at it, the breadth and depths of what they're offering in group fitness classes and all of that at that low price point. Yes, they have four levels of pricing and contract and no contract price and all of that. But I just knew they were going to bring a lot of defensive pressure. And I, and I just, I agreed. And I just, in my own mind, I argued that our market needed that. 
our market needed that. We're, we're, not, we're not a highly competitive market, certainly not a top fitness market like a Chicago, LA, New York, but we've got a lot of competition here and it's very easy to become complacent. You know, I think a lot of folks have become complacent in the market um, and, and so Crunch has brought a lot of defensive pressure and I think that is a wonderful thing, an absolute wonderful thing in any market. You know, it's great to be the one coasting, but it's also important when, when, when major entrants enter the market and bring pressure onto the market because why? Whether you're talking about LeBron James on the basketball court, because that enables people that are playing with him or against him to adjust their game. And of course now, you know, LeBron is still rocking and rolling, but now you've got, you know, you've got other folks. You've got Russell, Russell Westbrook, you've got Steph Curry, you've got James Harden, all right? You've got other folks that are making things happen. Um, as well, but that forces whoever was ruling the roost, that forces them to up their game, all right? They've got to adjust their style of play. They've got to adjust their game in order to successfully compete. And so when that defensive pressure is brought onto the game, then that enables other people to step up their games, you know, renovate their facilities, make things better, whatever the case may be, offer more, reconsider their pricing options, perhaps go to a non-contract when they only offered contract opportunities or, or pricing plans in the past and so it just causes others to elevate the game and I see that happening here in Metro Detroit and it's a wonderful thing to see. I love it, love it, love it. The value of defensive pressure is awesome. It does a lot on the market, not just in the fitness industry but in all industries. It just really, really, really causes everyone to up their game if they want to be remain in business and be viable. And so specifically here in Novi, I'm going to highlight some of our major players. And this is something you need to do in your own markets. And so we've got Lifetime Fitness on the south side of Novi. You've got Lifetime Fitness, the second facility, which is actually on the really in the north part of Novi slash commerce border. Uh, we've got the Sports Club of Novi. We've got Crunch Fitness on the Novi Farmington Hills border. We've got Powerhouse Gym Novi. We've got Powerhouse Gym Commerce slash West Bloomfield, which is very close to Novi, so it's, it's certainly a threat. And so these are all major players, but they're also threats to one another. So just keep that in mind. Next, Anytime Fitness in Novi, Planet Fitness, uh, number one, the current location, the one that I started out, the smaller location there in, on Beck and Pontiac Trail. Um, you've got a Planet Fitness number two coming in the future. You know, no specific details on when that's going to be happening, but certainly the construction, the Adele construction project, that whole thing is certainly underway. YMCA, Farmington Hills. Um, and then you've got some of the more boutique facilities such as CrossFit Novi, My House Fitness, I Love Kickboxing, which I actually had the opportunity to tour three weeks ago. Um, Fitness Together here in Novi, which is a one-on-one -on -one personal training studio. Um, Title Boxing Club, which is in Farmington Hills and not too far away from Novi. You always have, and this is true and in, in, in indicative of all markets, your, your parks and recreation department, whether that be free parks, walking trails, all of that. Community centers for those cities and entities that may have them. Novi doesn't have one, but a lot of, city, a lot of cities have. Community centers that are operated by the facilities or the, the cities that operate those facilities, pardon me, that can be free or very low cost. So that's always a threat to fitness facilities where people can go work out. Why? Because those facilities are subsidized by taxes you know, that, that residents are paying, or there may be a lower or minimal cost to participate in certain classes or activities or sports. Um, also, another threat, home-based trainers. And, and so that, just as I alluded to, the app and technology of folks being able to do things at home is certainly a threat. And this isn't an exhaustive list um, of threats, folks, but this is just shows you just how list, and we've got more players here in the, in the fitness market in Novi, but these are the market, these are the, the, the major players, uh, but the list is long. And so when you think, when someone comes into the market, when a new entrance comes, and, and you've got to evaluate based on, you know, what is the true market potential here? Um, the, the, market, the, the market here in Novi is a very mature market. It's not an emerging market. There's a lot here. We've got, it, like I said, the major chains. Uh, we've also got you know, YMCA within a, in a doable distance. And so it's just based on what the facility offers and what value that they're bringing to the table. And so for a new entrant to come in, our most recent or newest entrant, I Love Kickboxing, is, is certainly something, you know, obviously, a very unique concept. That's actually one of the, the highest rated boutique fitness chains. Um, so they're doing very well you know, nationally. Um, and so that's just always, always a threat. Um, another threat within that market, as you heard me highlight, Anytime Fitness. Earlier this year, they launched you know, a national campaign. We're starting to see Anytime Fitness, a sleeping giant um, that is that is really taken up or, you know, elevated their own marketing game to the next level. They're doing email campaigns and things like that, things that I haven't seen from them in the past. Um, getting emails from them regularly, and so that's it's great to see. It's always great to see. 
And so always want to pay attention to what's going on in your market. And I just want to highlight a few visuals here. And as you've heard me allude to countless times, uh, this is actually a direct, a direct mail piece that came earlier this year from Crunch Fitness um, that highlighted all of their, it was four locations at the time, but now the, the fifth location is open in Waterford. Um, but so what do they have here? Photos of group fitness classes, action shots, because that is one of the tremendous advantage that they have over others is their, their group fitness classes, but also certainly um, at a much lower price point than say, for example, uh, a, a, a lifetime fitness. And so I actually had the opportunity, you know, I've been to all their clubs and certainly went to their open house for the Farmington Hills location. It was, it was quite a sight to see. Uh, you know, many folks abandoning their own gym memberships that they had previously, um, jumping at the chance to sign up uh, with Crunch. But Crunch, as I stated, has brought a lot of defensive pressure on our market, and that is a wonderful thing to see because you're seeing that long list of major players, many of them have stepped up their game. They've really stepped up their game in terms of the marketing and, and what they're doing and the value added. Um, certainly won't highlight, you know, Powerhouse. I've highlighted Powerhouse, my former gym, uh, Powerhouse gym in the past. Um, here, several episodes, but now you've got here direct mail coming uh, with, with new promotional offers and things like that. You know, a couple months ago, they were offering the, the free Mexico voucher for the first 50 people that signed up. Uh, but now you've got new member savings of over $300. So they're getting very aggressive with their marketing and in terms of also building value, building value for what they are offering now. And so that's something, there's not been a lot of that in the past. I mean, I've gotten their mailers as well for many years. Um, and so Crunch has brought some pressure and, and it causing them also to, to really step up their game. And that's a wonderful, wonderful thing to see uh, because, you know, many people just kind of coast along and then a, a major player comes in and then they're forced to elevate their game. Yes, the, the ubiquitous Planet Fitness ads. And so, of course, you can see here, uh, $1 down, $10 a month. And last time I showed you the one that said no commitment. Uh, was required, but that in terms of bringing defensive pressure, you've got a lot of folks. I mean, you've even got Lifetime Fitness now that offers a no contract option. You know, the no contract option is pretty much becoming, it's quickly becoming a standard in the industry. Um, so, you know, price wise, Planet will always bring defensive pressure on a market. Uh, but then you've got, you know, other folks such as the Crunch Fitness that have also brought far more competitive pressure um, actually on, on, on places like Planet because of what they offer at that $9.95 base price point. So that's certainly an example um, of one. This was another Crunch one that I had, and, and fortunately it was, it was awesome to see that you know Crunch is no longer, Adam is not, I didn't see a direct mail piece uh, for, come to my house for the month of March because direct mail is expensive, and the ROI, the return on investment, as you've heard me state countless times, is, is very, very, very low. Um, and so that's always, you know, as his group is doing, you wanna, you wanna do have more guerrilla marketing tactics. You wanna do things that other folks aren't doing um, that are certainly far less expensive. There's no cost, or there's just the sunk cost that have of having employees you know, on the payroll, but they, you know, you're not paying all this extra incremental uh, money uh, and funds, using these incremental funds on top of that to, to do other things like many other folks that are doing. So just pay attention to what you're doing. Um, this was actually something that I saw an ad for Anytime Fitness. This is actually here for, for, Walt, for White Lake, Michigan location. Um, it's so interesting to see their, their, their three little points they're highlighting here, always open, you know, they're 24-7, you know, with a key fob, uh, group classes, and also friendly staff. You think about friendly staff, you think about how often that, that Planet Fitness emphasizes that, that, con that concept. It's just, it's just really interesting to see. But also, from a competitive standpoint, free tanning and hydro massage included. You know, come in for your seven-day free trial. So the hydro massage beds, you know, for the longest time, you know, Planet Fitness really held a, held a lock on that in terms of the market, but you see other folks from a competitive standpoint. And so that's why. So if you're, if, if you're Planet Fitness and you see other folks that are getting hydro massage, you know, yes, they're standard, they've been standard at Crunch Fitness, but other folks such as Powerhouse Gym so are now getting them, you know, the, the Novi and the Commerce West Bloomfield location have them. So when, when you see competitive chains and competitive gyms starting to up their game like that, those are threats. Those are threats. And so all of a sudden, you're not in a position anymore where you can say we're the only ones where you can find these hydro massage beds or, 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 or tanning. You know, yes, Crunch Fitness, yes, they offer the tanning beds, but they also offer spray tanning. So that's another option, you know, above and beyond what other facilities are offering as well. And I want to wrap this episode up here with when I talk about quickly my, my tour that I took, like I said, three weeks ago of I Love Kickboxing here. And so this was a couple of things that they had on the front desk. And so this is a partnership that they have with Atleta, Atleta 12 Oaks. And so this is an example where you get friends and family 20% off. 
So they're partnering with local businesses, fitness-related businesses, in order to get apparel. So that's always a smart strategy to take. But from a sales promotion standpoint, and remember, the, the, the value of sales promotion, whether it's, you know, do this and get this free, or sign up for Power the first 50 members signing up for Powerhouse membership, get a, a free Mexico resort voucher, or sign up for membership and being, being put into the raffle for a new Harley, as Crunch Fitness was doing here locally um, a few months ago. And so the, the value of sales promotion is get people to sign up now. It creates a sense of urgency. All right, so that's what you see when you see sales promotion. And so one of the sales promotions that, that I Love Kickboxing has, Fight to be Fit, three classes and free gloves for $19.99. Register now at ilovekickboxing.com. But as, as uh, Kayla at the front desk told me, you know what, if you, if you enter this code, I Love KB Team 5, then I could get 50% off that rate. So it would be all of this for $10. All right, and Monica Carson, you know, and I just want to wrap up this episode by saying, you know, in a SWOT analysis, when you're thinking about threats, one, certainly from a leadership perspective, you always want to evaluate who owns a facility. You know, who, who, who's, who's, who's the manager, particularly in a franchise situation, I'm always thinking who owns it. All right, who owns it? So Monica Carson was actually very successful, is a very successful I Love Kickboxing franchisee in Colorado, has Michigan from Michigan, actually brought this chain back to Michigan, got what, four or five locations now, Norvi is the most recent, but you have someone that has mastered the system that is now, you know, expanding to other states, um, so that, from a leadership perspective, is a threat, okay, PF Michigan Group here in our metro Detroit area, actually in the state of Michigan, uh, really, PF Michigan Group is a threat, why, because you've got folks that own the latest count that I saw, it's 45 clubs, all right, so that shows this is a group that has mastered this franchise, that has mastered the system, that, that is just from a leadership perspective, that is a very, very big threat. So when you see folks that, that are successful within their franchises or they've been in business for a long time, whatever the case may be, if it's a private entity and they're thriving and they're doing well, from a leadership perspective, that's a threat. So you always have to think about who's in your market, who's operating in your market, but who's running the facilities within your market. Because the leadership and success of the leadership team owning those gems and running those gems, that in, a, that in and of itself is certainly a threat. Yes, from an HR perspective, uh, but that's always something you want to evaluate. If you're in a situation where you've got a new person coming in and they've never run a fitness facility before, yeah, there's going to be time, more than likely, that there's going to be trial and error and they got to figure out what to do and what not to do, what works, what doesn't work. So there's some lead up time, you know, where that is often the case. Yes, Crunch Fitness here in our Metro Detroit area is certainly an outlier where, where, where Adam has just, you know, hit the ground running. But that's, a, that's an outlier, that's a unique case. But most folks kind of, you know, it takes a while and it takes time to build momentum and all of that, as is true with any new business or any new franchise or situation. So pay attention to all facets of what's going on in your market and recognize the value of defensive pressure. When you, perhaps it's you that's bringing a, a, a you're a new entrant into a particular market, but just recognize the value that that brings, that gives folks more options, but that also causes other people, your competitors, to up their game if they want to compete. And just like March Madness, just like the NBA Finals, whatever the case may be, defensive pressure is always a good thing. Never want to coast, because you get complacent, you know, the status quo is cool, you can you can just, you know, whatever, coast along, make no improvements. But when that when that entrant or series of entrants comes in, that forces you to take action if you want to survive. But the, the, the goal is never to just survive. You always want to thrive, right? So pay attention. Do your SWOT analysis. Like I said, this is a modified, abbreviated version. I don't have time. It would be a three-hour episode if I were to do a SWOT, and I just can't do that. I don't have time. But so, folks, I look forward to wrapping up this leadership series next time by highlighting, yes, 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 one of my favorite topics, confidence, 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 confidence of leadership, folks. So stay tuned. But until then, thanks so much for your time and make it a wonderful day.